Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Hold the Mic. We are your hosts, Ryan Shedd. This is my brother, Ian Sherman. How are you what doing? What up? No, brother man. Hey man. How's it going, Feeling man? good. Hey, I've been just uh, uh, tormenting children, random kids on the street, uh, uh, chasing grandmas uh, out here on these blocks. Am I going to see? Uh, am I going to see you on TikTok tormenting you children soon? might see me on soon? World Star. I don't know, man. I, I started a couple <laughs> things today, man. Happy Friday the Thirteenth. How are we doing? <laughs> you know, we having a good time. Uh, a good time. Happy Friday the Thirteenth to everybody. <laughs> um, Halloween came to, early to those me. who That's celebrate. Yeah, to those who celebrate. Um, Hello, I see you. That's all I got to say. Um, crazy recognizes crazy. That's very true. Um, we'll get into we'll get into my crazy recognizing crazy later. Uh, but first, let's let's talk about what everybody wants to hear us talk about, which is going to be the debate. Now, first okay. off, allow me to just say thank you to everybody who watched with us. We were over ten thousand people watching the debate with us. So, um, yeah, thank you to everybody who tuned in. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, it was, uh, was oh, dude, it was, it was so good. It was really better than it. I expected. Mm. It, it really was. Yeah. Like I expected Kamala to hand him his, his behind, but it, it was, it, it was the ease in which she did it. And it right. was her ability to stay composed the entire time. She has a temperament. She, she is worthy of the seat. And you and you want to know when I realized he was really screwed was when he he pulled the uh, I'm talking you you you, oh, you yeah, recognize that flex. right yeah, and yeah, she yeah, just yeah, kind of yeah. got yeah. that grin on her face like she okay. said oh oh yeah okay she, she was like I got okay you. I see you boo boo like, yeah she's like I see where we're going with oh, yeah. this okay oh yeah and I want to tell you you know it was funny because before it started you were like Ian you know everybody's streaming this I don't I don't think we're gonna have the views <laughs> but know. let's do this I was like yeah we'll get a hundred people watching the replay it's at 20 something thousand okay like it's it's, it's insane it's, it's growing so it is yeah. what it is haters haters gonna hate <laughs> <It's all there. laughs> analytics, don't lie, analytics, don't lie, analytics don't lie baby analytics don't lie 24 countries 268 cities and 20 plus thousand people watching the debate with us analytics don't lie people where, where, what are you doing on a Friday night and why aren't you here? You know that, that's the hey, question. Anywhere you could be in the world, you want to join us? Come on in. Come on Water's in. Water's warm. Water's yeah. warm. And as Kamala said, we're, we, have, we have space. We have space we have, we for have everybody. Space. We have space. Come on in. You and know? you know what? That's what I really liked about the debate, too, was she didn't, she didn't just swing at the low-hanging fruit the whole time. You know what I'm saying? No, like, no. she brought it back to being about, look. We need to turn the page. We need to right. move on from this dude. We, you know, more importantly, we need to move on from this agenda, right? And, and, and do better. And, and that was the the overwhelming message that that I kept hearing through the night was, yeah, that's great. You know, it's like 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 she keeps saying same old playbook, but we're we're tired of that, and was, we're ready to to press move on. on. We're ready to move on. It's it's interesting to. Me. It's interesting because it was a master class of like really debating in, in the context mm. that she would start to answer questions, but then she would drop little little nuggets, little bait to really get under his skin. Yeah. And and when you saw that he no longer could take it and yep. she had him at the first handshake, you know, she went into his space. He was not going to pull the same shit he pulled on Hillary where he was walking around and doing all these things nope. and making people like uncomfortable. Like, what is he doing? You know, he got under her skin. Right. So they really knew uh, how to mop the floor with him. Yeah. There it is right there, mopping the floor, right? And so it's really quite uh, telling because she was like, okay, I'm going to stare at you when you talk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh at the shit you say. You know, that... power move of taking her platform and saying her time and saying um, go to his rally. Like oh, that, 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 that takes away all of his power. It was beautiful. All of power, it was beautiful. Know? Yeah. It Just was a master the... class. It was a master class in how to how to debate and and more importantly, how not to take the bait right when presented. Right. And, and that was clearly something that Mr. You know, I've debated seven times. I'm the most experienced clearly hadn't learned in those seven times. It's almost that, like LeBron James and Michael Jordan. You know, it's like I, I've been to the playoffs so many times, but no rings. It's like, OK, I got hey, my rings. <laughs> make sure you stick around, Bunny. We got something for you in a little bit. Oh, yeah. We see you, Bunny. What's up? Um, I have concepts of a plan was probably my one of my favorite, <laughs> if not my favorite 
Comments. I started talking to my wife about that every time she has plans. Uh, I'm just like, I have concepts. I have, of I have a concept of a plan. You know what I mean? But it, it I had a concept out. of a plan of us coming on at five, but <laughs> see how that works? I drew it on the schedule <laughs> in Cran. It, it was scheduled that way. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it was in a uh, raceable marker. <laughs> It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh, God. No, um, you know, in all seriousness, though, uh, it was nice to walk away from a presidential debate and not feel one of two things. One, uh, we're screwed if Donald Trump gets in and he's still a raving lunatic. Uh, and two, our guy is old and has lost more than a step. It was like I walked away feeling like, holy crap, we finally have a leader that's ready. Like, she's ready. Yeah. And yeah. we we questioned it so much, you know, leading up until the last couple months. You know, was she going to be ready? Was she going to be able to garner the support that was going to be necessary for her to win? And right. all of our questions plus more have been answered that, yes, she's ready. Yes, she's qualified. You know, she she has the experience. You know, we always talk. We've been talking a lot about the the ladder to success and the the career ladder. If you compare Donald Trump's career path to Kamala Harris's career path, it's very clear which one of the candidates is you know uh, the people's candidate. You know, Kamala Harris followed a path that a lot of Americans follow. You know, she didn't start off with a lot of money. She didn't start off with a very affluent family. You know, she went to school. She got out loans. You know, she she got her law degree. She passed the bar exam, even if it wasn't on the first try. You know, she became a DA. She became a, a AG. She was elected senator. You know, she's now she's the vice president, and now she's going to be our next president. That's right. somebody who has literally put their foot on every rung of the ladder on their way up, and that's who I want. I want the person that has had to go through every step of the way to get there because they're going to know what everybody underneath them is having to deal with. That's right. That's right. She's had more. She has more experience going into this position, which tells you. And I think that's even more of of a woman's story in America. Yeah, they've had to they've had to handle every step of the way to get to that number one seat where unlike Trump, where he fails forward. You know, and it's just given the keys because he can be so braggadocious and 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 lie to the top <laughs> and use people to get to the top. I'm sorry, this comment. This is a comment that just made me. Uh, Doomer said she should have flicked his little mushroom. As a side of <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. There it is. Only here on the show. Like in my head, I'm just like I instantly went to like thunk. <laughs> like I'm, I'm going to go back over here now. It's so um, good. Yeah, the hand, like you said, he was done from the handshake. I knew he wasn't going to debate again as soon as that happened. Like as yeah. soon as she went over into his space and shook his Personal hand, and said space. Kamala Harris, and it was like, oh yeah. It was almost like it was almost like that bald eagle and him again grabbing the burrito bowl all over again at his desk. <laughs> it was that, just backing up like a little bitch. You know what I mean? Like, ah, you know. Oh, that's it's, so it's funny. Of, that's really what it is. You, you know, know, I mean, it's reality. So. Uh, for me, I don't think there was any real surprises. Uh, Trump was his normal unhinged self, unable to answer any direct question, right. you know, always using talking points, which half of them, you know, like Kamala said, I think you forgot that you're running against me and not Joe Biden anymore. No, no she didn't say it as gracious as you. She said, no. you're running against me. Yeah. Well, that was a threat. Yeah. Well, you know, you running against me. She, she, you know, she was showing him who has a big dick in the locker room, and it ain't him. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> She's good. Reality. She is. She is the person. And and if you do nothing else, seriously, if you do nothing else, just look at the body language of the two. Yeah. Seriously, you yeah. put the TV on mute and look at the way that Kamala Harris turns her body, not just her head. Her whole body towards Donald Trump yeah. every time she goes to say something about him. Like, she doesn't look straight ahead at the camera or the, the moderators. No, she turns and looks right at him. And I love that crap. Like, yeah. I love it. It's like, yeah, stare him in his freaking eyeballs if he'll look at you and tell he never him. Did. He never looked. Never did. 
Like, seriously, the dude, he maybe had glanced <laughs> over a couple of times, but he didn't mm. stare her down when no. he was making one of his no. talking points. Not a single no. one. And you're tell, you're going to tell me that that dude is going to walk into a room with somebody like freaking Vladimir Putin and... And no, she called hold. it. She called it. She said he is, she called him a puppet. Yeah. She said you're gonna be right there. No, no, there was no plan. There was no nothing. It was the most vague garbage. concept of a plan. He has concepts of a concepts plan. Concepts of a plan. Concepts of a plan and, for everything. For and everything. here, here's another thing I want to point out that I think is pretty funny from the 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 right is they keep talking about how Kamala Harris has been in power for the last three and a half years. Why hasn't she? fixed anything why why is she saying she'll fix it when when she wins and it's like well first off she's vice president she isn't president it's not her agenda it's joe biden's agenda her position is to support that agenda in any way necessary because she serves at the pleasure of the president right so that's why that's a dumb talking point but then it's like okay let's flip it on you donald trump is talking about how he's gonna balance the budget he's talking about how he's gonna you know fix the border he was actually president for four years, in case you guys forgot. And by the way, in 2017, he had both the House and the Senate. He failed to re- to repeal Obamacare like he promised. He failed to balance the budget. In fact, he added $7.8 trillion with, I believe it was $4.8 trillion before, before COVID. COVID even hit. That's right. That's right. So, you, you know, and, and then you've got people like Elon Musk out there. You know, saying, "Oh, let's let's uh, put him back in because he's best for business. Best for whose business? Not America's business." Name all his businesses. Uh, uh, What's working? What's you know, working? Like, look at look at Trump uh, Trump Media. Trump Media, in case you That's didn't know, is worth about hard. as much as Shed Media at this point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the self hate is real. <laughs> which which is which is about zero in terms of you know public ownership. <laughs> It's hitting hard, man. It's hitting hard. It, you know what I'm saying? It, like, it, but yeah, it's it's right there. When you look at all the failed businesses, and and even looking at the amount that he was given, it's it's not the true American story. You know what I mean? It's not. You're talking about a nepo baby that's that's narcissistic, and it's like it's not it's not going anywhere. It's not oh, going to work. Tavi G, yeah, Demi Moore's line from G A Giant uh, that would shut him up for yeah. sure. I love that movie. But it's it's it's. It's interesting to me because he had that much experience as president versus a, a vice president. Um, and if that was the case, then you're, you're saying that Mike Pence had a lot more power than he did, which he didn't. You know, you're the president of the Senate. That's it. That's that's your role as like the highest position that you really do have. Do you mind if I do you mind if I address a, 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 a troll? Oh, by all means. Oh, uh, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, so, Ron, when you say. Doesn't Ryan pay for Elon's subscription and the laugh emoji? You're right, I do. And here's why I pay for it. Number one, because I pay $11 a month for Elon Musk and he pays me around $500 to $800 a month. Math so, is mathing. So I, I, I can do this and turn $11 into you know anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a month. So that's, a that's smart number business. one. That's number one. Number two, Elon Musk has turned Twitter into a pay-to-play platform. So... Because I stream this podcast there and I post there and spend as much time on there as I do, it made sense for me to pay so that my message doesn't get throttled down. So my thinking behind it was I understand why people you know, decided to go to other platforms and stop participating, but I had a different uh, uh, approach, which was I want to be able to project our message, our democratic liberal message on the platform and fight back. And I knew that if I didn't pay, that I was going to get throttled down. So I pay. So those are the main two reasons that I do it. Um, and third, are kiss my ass. I'd like to add a fourth. Uh, Ryan's not shy about it. So you're not really saying anything new. He yeah, talks right? about it actually on this platform. So welcome to the show. Um, <laughs> take a seat. Put your feet up. You're going to get yep. comfortable. You may Enjoy laugh. Yourself. You may laugh. You may even think for a second. But uh, we got some things in store for you because... Uh, he has a better business plan than your boy Trump does, and he's not trying to scam you out of it. So here we are. That's very true. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. And since you're here, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you can come back here for a verbal ass whooping every Friday. <laughs> That's like, I love here it. we are. <laughs> oh, God. So speaking of uh, verbal ass whoopings, yes, I, I don't know if it would qualify as a verbal ass whooping, but uh, I was asked a lot if I was going to participate or go to uh, Donald Trump's Tucson rally that he had, you and there were, 
Bobby Kirk up and left? Is that you not- know, th- 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 there there were a couple of gems that came out of there. I'm not gonna lie, I've seen the video clips. Um, but no, I decided. How, close was that to you? How like in proximity? Twenty minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, he, that prick was way too close to my house for too my close. liking. Too close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like my sexual offender alerter should have been going off, but for some reason it didn't. Um, <laughs> Got to protect these kids, man. Hey, man. Um, damn, that, sorry, that one was fucked up. Okay. Um, but no, we got a little clip of of the turnout, and I heard that the turnout was, was not that great, especially considering the, uh, as you'll see, the auditorium, I think, sits maybe 750, maybe. So the fact that it, 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 yeah, I don't even think it sits, seats a thousand. And this is, this is what it looked like. Like when you I look to, at that. Would you like a kicker real quick for yeah, our, please. Uh, one more thing for Ron? Please. Trump apparently had to pay $150,000 in advance to book that space. Yes, he did. And you so want to know why? Look at some pay to play because his resume on paying venues. He so owed well. he owed the city of Tucson eighty one thousand dollars. Dang. Regina Romero, uh, 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 the mayor of Tucson, wrote him a letter asking for the money. The la- like uh, about a year ago when he was when he was in Tucson, he came to two or he came into Arizona, and she sent the letter publicly. She's like, hey. By the way, you still owe us eighty-one thousand dollars. We'd like to pay our law enforcement and security that kept you safe while you were in our city. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so after that, they started requiring: if you're going to come in, you have to pay for your security in before advance. you come. Yeah. So it's yeah. all because he screwed the city over the first time. Isn't that the military rule? Every yeah. every you ain't every get rule us and twice. regulation. You ain't yeah. going to get us twice. That's it. Every every one of those has a story behind it, and that's why you're doing it. So yep. so he couldn't even fill that room. It didn't look like it. Like, you know, I mean, of course he wasn't, you could say he wasn't speaking yet. So who knows okay. what time it was, you know, just okay. to be, just to be fair. Okay. But, hey, we are fair here. We but are even fair. that man, you know, I don't see a bunch of people. I don't see it being standing room only waiting for this dude to talk. This looks like a, you know, a new indie band that's just breaking out versus, you know, the big headliner that is uh, rocking stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Huge difference. Yeah. It is. And I mean, I, I understand that Trump is he has to get in wherever he can fit in. You know, there, there are places that just won't do business with him and, and his campaign, which limits his ability to, you know, rent out bigger spaces that, you know, whether he could fill them or not, I don't think he can rent them. Yeah. Like, I think that's part of his problem is that there are people that are now refusing to do business with him in his campaign. Completely. So, Completely. Completely. which I don't blame him. You know, as yeah. as a small business owner, you you have to protect yourself. And if you know somebody is notorious for not paying their bills, then it's just smart business to ask for the money up front. It's like a lawyer. If you're a criminal lawyer, always get that money up front, baby. Because if they go to jail, you ain't getting sh- nothing. Oh, man, go ahead and replay uh, Biggie Smalls, man. Ten crack commandments. You would <laughs> know everything you didn't know about the game. You know what I'm saying, bro? Know. And I'm loving yep. uh, 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 Broad Eye View right over here. We're talking about uh, he's on the Spinal Tap tour. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> a- <laughs> so good. I like so that. So good. We're just gonna dial it up to eleven, guys. We're gonna dial it up to eleven today. Uh, I, I'm telling you, hey Peg, it's good to see you. It's good to see you all. Like Ian said, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share with people, let them know about the podcast. Um, uh, again. Thank you to everybody who showed up to watch the debate with us. I'm still mind blown that over 20,000 people have seen it. And we had 10,000 people with us live, just, yeah. just that night yeah. live. So, yeah. um, and, and the Growing. reviews, you know, outside of the right wing, you know, extremist pundits, you know, even people on Fox News were saying, yeah, Kamala won that. Like, even they had to say, let's say this. Yeah. People who are serious period about life and about politics they're like yeah now that was that was a horrible let's just cut through the bullshit it was a horrible debate on trump's side um clearly he was not prepared you could tell it was like a book report you saw who read the book you saw who showed up and just thought they could wing it and the thing is that we're all understanding because we're not new to this trump wings everything there is there is no real plan. It's concepts of plans, and it's just bullshit made up. This is the person who said to inject bleach. 
Like we're not interested in you being in yeah. power when we have to deal with the world and in today's today's current situation. We're not interested. We don't yep. need you winging anything. We need the right people that you're not going to literally throw under the bus because you do not know how to get out of your own way. Yeah. And in in the end, you know, I'm I'm seeing a lot of conservatives try to find the whataboutisms of all this. Well, well, that was three against one. And I'm like, oh, okay. And here's a, actually a kicker for you. I that reached was, out to all my conservative funny. friends and I'm like, hey, I just, I want to know, seriously, what did you think about Trump's performance? I didn't ask what you thought about Harris. I don't care about, you, you don't like her. I got that. Yeah. What do you think about Trump's performance? And everything they had to say to me led back to her and how she didn't, she lied. She was never honest, this and the third. And I go, I'm not, what did you think about him? What right. did you think? Did you could you sit there and really take that seriously and say he did a phenomenal job? Not one of them actually watched the debate. And yeah. I go, they're like people people that don't vote. It's like if you don't if you didn't watch the debate, then don't talk to me about the debate. Like I we watched every second of the debate. <clears throat> but they literally were like, no, this is but this I saw the clips. I'm like, you're literally watching a, a cut yeah, up clip clips. of Kamala Harris that the NRA put together. Yeah. And it's like, did you watch what they actually broke down and what they were talking about? So, no. like, this was one that uh, that I posted. So the Hodge twins, who are just they're just horrible people, um, said whistleblower came out and said ABC gave Kamala's team the questions before the debate so she could prep. And they promised not to fact check her. The media is the direct enemy of the people. I was like, before the debate, you made a, you made fun of Kamala for prepping a week for the debate. Now you're crying, claiming she cheated because she took the debate seriously. What made you decide to support a felon, fraud, rapist, and accused pedophile over a qualified and experienced black woman? Because they're, they're black men, just yeah. in case you yeah. didn't know. It's just like, wow, really, guys? That, that's... They sound like bitches, but whatever. Uh, whatever. They're definite bitches. Uh, yeah. Um, just in general. It just, it just gives small dick energy. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. it's like the, the, I'm sorry to say this. It's, it really is going nude, going into the, jump in the pool. And you're like, you're, a, you don't have big dicks. <laughs> you're that, you're that, you're that tiny dick motherfucker, aren't you? You are, you tiny dick motherfuckers. That's who you hey, are. Sometimes the water's just cold, motherfucker. It was cold that night. It was cold that day. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> hey, but Jeffrey, so Jeffrey's going to a Turning Point USA event, which is, uh, um, Turning, T, is that uh, Charlie Kirk, right? That's Charlie Kirk event. Yeah, be careful around those people. Don't let their stupid run up, rub off on you. Mm. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the, uh, oh, uh, another attack they're doing right now on Kamala is that um, she's sorority sisters with one of the monitors, uh, uh, mo moderator. Oh, and, I, uh, go ahead. I'll let you know. All, all I sat there was just like, I, I, I had to respond. I'm just like, because all of us black people know each other. Like, you know, just, just in general. We go to HBCU and we're all now just in cahoots. And oh, it's almost like said. we meet up. Well, we know how you go. Okay. We know. No, we know no. How I simply said, no, I simply said, I go, oh, you mean the sorority sister that shut her down the one time that she tried butting in the way that you they have let Trump point. several times? You have I was a like, solid that point. sorority sister? You have a solid point. Uh, and you and I both got upset in the episode. In, in that you episode. can go back and watch it. I was like, wow. I, we, I was like, wow, that was some like, bullshit. bullshit. We called it. We called that bullshit. Um, but you know what? There, There's all your they, they, three against one team up. But it just shows you like that two groups of people can watch the same thing and come out with yeah. totally different, you know, opinions of what happened or, yeah. or impressions of what happened. It's just that, that boggles my mind. It just, no, it doesn't. It's, it, it's people see what they want and that's, no, that's true. we're not, we're not here to change anybody's minds in that context. It's just like more so of, Hey, we're here. If you want to come join us and you actually want to have a, a honest, serious conversation, we can, but yeah. this pointing fingers and, and these little measly, these weak little attacks that, that come up from trolls and for whatever else that they try to throw at, at any Democrat or any yeah. person who just doesn't agree with them. It's one of those things where it's just like you, you don't even understand really what's going on here, nor can no. you look past your nose when it comes to other people. That too, that part. And there's and there's multiple layers to this. It could be that they're racist. It could be that they hate women it, and be misogynistic. It could be a number of things. Um, we're seeing them uh, literally troll on mainstream media at this point. And it's just like, okay, here we are. Like, why is this the news coverage that we have to talk about? Why are we talking about cats and dogs and, and, and the whole debacle in Ohio that doesn't exist? And it's like, you, so you're saying that it's three against one because 
the mediator is like that we've talked to the state manager and that is this is not this is debunked this is not real yeah like can we move on and it's like no he wanted to double down on his ignorance but that's 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 going too far that you're holding trump accountable it's like this wasn't a rally this was a debate yes he did not understand the assignment and it makes me think about his age where he's at oh for sure how he's handling himself all the things he said about biden made me think about him in this context well you know we talked about it during the biden debate you know even though it was very evident that biden had lost a few steps you know at the debate and and i think everybody at that point could see it he was still able to you know keep track of the conversation better than donald trump hell better than you and me yes and so it was still kind of like you're still like donald trump's like you're not beating this guy horribly not from where i was sitting right like like he's still like biden was still getting his his not just his jabs he was getting his right hooks in and so then to see, like you said, then to switch it up and go, OK, now you aren't going up against an 81 year old man anymore. Now you're going up against a 59 year old badass who is about to show just how unhinged you are. Right. And and like you said, there definitely came a point during the debate where I think, like you said, most rational people probably said, wow, this feels like when we watched Biden. He he seems senile. He seems like he can't keep track of converse, uh, of the conversation. He seems like he can't answer a relevant question. I don't know. You know, like his He's rambling was his rambling was was even more incoherent than it's been in the past. So so clearly, and, he, and, the, and here to add what you're saying. Yeah, please. The fact that he was so thrown off by her small comments that triggered him mm. in a debate. What is it like when it's a world leader who is controlling him, manipulating him via compliment? Because if it's that easy to control him on some negative shit, what would it be like to praise him and stroke his ego and just a little bit? Stroke that ego and give him, you know, the golden toilet. And it's just like, here's the golden knee pads and here's the golden mouthpiece. And here we're going with it yep. because they literally have him in his hand. It's just done. Done. He's so easily manipulated. He's a weak, weak, weak man. Old man. Yeah. And you Republicans chose him. Yeah. How? <laughs> it boggles my mind because you guys literally talked about how Biden was such an old man. What happened in Reno with with uh, Tim Walz? Did they cancel a Reno event? I don't know. I don't um, know. You guys want to feed us in? in the, well, in the yeah, because some people are putting it in the in the chat. That's why I'm asking. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what Rochelle said. I think uh, I think Donald Trump underestimated Kamala Harris. Uh, clearly, he didn't prepare. He said he said she was dumb as rocks. What does that yeah. make him? Yeah, going. He said into he the- was more he was more experienced. He's done seven of these. Blah blah. Like he literally, yeah. like it made me want to go. Hey Donald, how are you going to go tell all your friends and family that a black woman just whooped your ass? Well, I think he's like going to come that, out with a disc album, hurt. and he's going to tell everybody he got shot nine times. Like he's going to look like fifty cent. <laughs> like he's he's going to be able to put it out there straight up. I got shot nine times. I'm coming out with a, a diss track. <laughs> Get out of here. Republicans really do have low standards. Up. They would eat it up. They would absolutely eat it up. You know, and I and I hate saying Republicans because I know I know some Republicans in my life that you know they don't want to abandon the party. You know, they want to be a part of turning the party around but they're not trumpies mm. you know so there is a difference but yeah. but at the same time it gets really hard to stand up for them when they don't stand up and say something about other republicans doing nasty you know ridiculous things or other republicans standing up for trump it's but like is- it's not just enough to to say well i don't support trump it, it just isn't the one thing that I would say that I give Republicans credit for is that they get behind theirs and they lock in. And I always revert back to how Democrats eat Democrats and IE that's Al Franken, um, you know, and how they how they got rid of Al Franken, which we always talk about. I think that was the dumbest move that ever happened out of the Democratic Party. But um, mm-hmm. that also shows you how easily they could become a cult because they just no matter what, get behind each other and they just they can't hold each other accountable. 
And yeah. in this situation, I will break it down being different. You have Republicans. You have people like Liz Cheney. She is a Republican. Dick Cheney is a Republican. And they are going against this man. And there are Republicans for Kamala Harris, as we're seeing. Um, this is mega. This is this is the, the, the cult that they really needed. It's, a, it's cancerous. It is definitely infectious within their party. And maybe it's what's necessary for this party to have to go through a complete revamp. So who knows? Yeah. We may see the death of the party uh, at the at this come this November. You know, it's possible. You know, um, you know, I, I got to tell you, I, I look forward to a day. I hope, I hope we see it before we're, we're we're gone. That we have more than two viable political parties. We or, used to. We used to. You know, historically, or, we used to. Or we get to a point where we start adopting, you know, rank choice voting, you know, and, and maybe other ideas that I have no idea about right now. Um, but there, there's, we definitely need to reevaluate our system. You know, you want to talk about cheating. I think the biggest tool for cheating right now is honestly the electoral college. You know, that is the biggest tool that one party has over the other to negate the popular vote. It puts it puts a lot of pressure on winning people who are not willing to um, people who are not really open minded, mm. you know, people who are not really surrounded by culture, people who are not exposed to different cultures. Um, it, it's very heavy on. And I'm not trying to say the flyby states don't matter. They do. They feed America. There's yeah. very important people there. It's just an element there where you always wonder where racism or where bigotry comes from. And it's from the absence of, of exposure because you have someone like JD Vance, or you have somebody like Trump who sits there on their podium and screams all these fake narratives and all these lies. And they, and they sell them this false dream. And, and you, you can only imagine that they're like, well, I need the help. I need the assistance. This person's going to do it. They are telling me they're going to do it. That was 2015 into 2016. But if yeah. you're still falling for the okie doke, that's it right there. If you're still you. falling for this, that's on you. There's, there's there's no way around it anymore. So and yeah, this this had me laughing. We need to start an underground railroad from Springfield to my house. Anyone want to help? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's here's the thing. It's not Springfield. Everybody there loves them. Everybody's having a great time. Oh man. It's these assholes that are trying to take the number 1 seat, number 1 and 2 seat. They got to go, man. They got to go. We got to yeah. get rid of them. Because everybody in Springfield saying, "Look, we love the community that we have here. This is they're even championing it. This is some of the most hard working people that have come to this area and are helping us rebuild our our town, our city." Yeah. Rebuilding Ohio. There's a lot of misinformation and um, hate being pushed. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that's a good place to to talk about Laura Loomer and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, <laughs> so there's a currently a virtual MMA fight going on between Laura Loomer and Too Marjorie bad, Taylor Greene. Too bad, Butch. Something bodies. Too blonde, be bleach, <laughs> blonde. Butch it's like body. Godzilla vs. Kong. Is that what we're looking at? Man, Jasmine just, has some. She has body. bars, dude. I can't. I can't say it the way she did. <laughs> yeah, she's like the Kendrick of uh, of Congress. I just, right just want to hear put it on the beat and just have Jasmine go into it, man. Yeah, um, it's going down. But it's yeah, it's no, nothing, man. Let's get ready to rumble. I'm two. telling you. So, Woo. and I will say that the, you've messed up when you've lost Margie Taylor Green. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, well, actually, let me show the video first. So this is a video. Uh, this is how it started, right? Well, I don't know if this is the video that started it all, but it's it's along the same lines. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is trying to say that uh, that she's being racist, that Laura Loomer is being racist, and that there's no place for it, and it's just kind of like, "Hi, pot, meat, kettle." <laughs> so wild, man. So, but just have a wow. listen to what Laura Loomer said, and then we can we can discuss it. 
basically saying, well, you know, ain't nobody but the law. You know, I'm a, I'm one of these, uh, you know, strong, independent black woman. I don't need no man. And <laughs> I'm going to get whitey. I'm going to get whitey. And I'm going to lock Donald Trump up, just like Letitia James, right? And uh, <laughs> she goes, uh, now, you're going to elect me, and I'm going to lock him up. We're going to get Trump, like the way they talk and their little DEI Shaniqua voices. And it, it's just very piercing, very irritating sound. They all have the, they all have the same voice. I'm talking about Kamala Harris. Uh, Letitia James and Fannie Willis, like all of the like meritless DEI Shaniquas talk the same way. It's very obnoxious the way that they talk. Speaking of obnoxious, <laughs> exhibit A. So just a grotesque human being. I mean, anytime right? and, and look, this is this is dear white people. Please don't impersonate black. And 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 here's the thing. Mm. That's not even black. Yeah, that wasn't even black. That is literally when you when you try to act and and you put your spin, your own bias on what a black person sounds like. Like keep in consideration we come in all shades, shapes, colors, everything. All right? I'm right in front of you. This is how I talk. And we can do the 9 to 5 business performance and give you that Obama. We do it. And then the moment we close that door, take off that suit, What's up, player? We we see each other. It mm. happens. But there's a reality there where it's like if you don't have the finesse and that soul, it, it ain't coming out correct. No. You look like you took off the sheet to give us a little TED Talk. And I'm just telling you right now, <laughs> it does not work. I like that. Yeah, so um, now let's move back to what Marjorie Taylor Greene said. Uh, so Laura Loomer put out something said, if Kamala Harris wins, the White House will smell like curry. And White House speeches will be facilitated via a call center, and the American people will only be able to convey their feedback through <clears throat> customer set. And it goes on. So Marjorie Taylor Greene replied with, "This is appalling and extremely racist. It does not represent who we are as Republicans or MAGA. <laughs> this does not represent President Trump. This type of behavior should not be tolerated ever. Yo. Laura Loomer should take this down." Yo, now let me ask you. Who's been hanging out next to Trump this entire time? Entire time. This doesn't represent Trump? She wrote that probably sitting next to him. Mm, mm, Let's mm. be serious. And here's what I'm trying to understand. You're picking a fight with the Haitians. You're picking a fight right now with blacks for Trump. You're picking a fight with Indians. What are you doing? Yep. What correlate? What is the group of people you want voting for you? Explain, yeah. because it's not just white people in this country as a majority anymore. I'm sorry. Nope. There is a massive amount of individuals here. I mean, you know what? Oh no, they haven't. They haven't really uh, 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 attacked any Asian people in this country. Besides uh, uh, Kung Flu and all that shit that he said uh, ways back, he hasn't this time around. Oh, Trump. Okay. Trump. Yeah, Trump, yeah. Trump, Trump. Trump. Yeah. You know, just his normal China. You know, China talking China. points, but I don't. China outside of that, yeah, you know, I can't think of any off. But top they of haven't my, done any nothing. I can't like think this. of anything off the top of my head. Yeah. Nothing like this. They're not saying cats, dogs, none of this bullshit. It's none of that stuff. It's it hasn't been an attack on them yet. Yeah, maybe that's who they're trying to get. Yeah, I uh, I I just don't I don't understand these people. You know, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene who completely lack all. Uh, ability for self-assessment you know uh, uh self-awareness like she has none yeah it's like lady that's you like you are not, you're, you're like maybe two degrees colder than that <laughs> you know like no you are not the person to be out here playing moral police right A and right. um so with it's your just, jewish space lasers and all yeah that with shit. It, <laughs> Exactly. Yes, get out of here. So, um, but we, but we have our very own over here, uh, Angry Bunny, who, who I captured a uh, uh, handle in business and collecting all these Republican men, all these conservatives, and I was like, Angry Bunny's over here. She put in the work, man. She's putting in the work, and I, I had to, I got to congratulate you. You, you captured this moment, and you're calling it out. Yeah, she says uh, all Republican men are telling you to be quiet, like the good handmaidens they've made you uh one says guys put aside your petty cat fight do this after the election can y'all knock it off we have an election to win come on laura loomer and mtg uh 
can we do this after the election? And we have the most important election of our lives. We have to win this election. Otherwise, America is done for. This sounds like high school chick crap. Uh, knock it off. We don't really give a rat's ass about your problems with each other. Girls, keep it offline. <laughs> Yo, I give it to Bunny, man. She gave you the poo-poo platter of these idiot-ass men and how they really do think. They want a whole bunch of those Katie Brits in the kitchen. Tell Quiet. Them. Get your get your butt back in that kitchen. Oh yeah, and I saw I saw you, Bunny. I saw a lot that you were going in them. She was like, "I bet you how many of these are phone calls telling them to shut the fuck up." Like it's mm-hmm. it's really there. It's really there. Let me see Great what this job. One. I see what that was. Okay. Um. So yeah, with that, it's two races trying to decide who's who's less racist. I guess is is, is essentially the the breakdown. It's like Judy Garland in blackface. All right, I'm telling you right now. Uh, like, if you haven't seen it. It's really good. Go watch that clip. <laughs> I, I haven't actually. She got she got Wizard of Oz after she did blackface. Oh, nice. Mwah! Perfect Hollywood, classic Hollywood. Yeah. Well, to be fair, back in the 30s, that was slightly more acceptable. Mm. I'm saying I'm the saying, cu- I'm no, saying no, 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 the no. culture back then. I'm not. No, no, you know, no. no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not it. saying that. I'm saying when you go watch it. Oh, it's pretty cringy. It's, it's really cringe. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah, I've never seen it. It's bad. I'm telling everybody to watch it. Yeah, I've never seen it. So, um, but, yeah. So yeah, shout out to Angry Bunny for for doing the Lord's, to doing Bun. the Lord's work out there. Uh, <laughs> you inspired me. I want to be you when I grow up. I'm just telling you right now, Angry Bunny. Oh man, you got to make them eat their words sometimes. I, that that's, <laughs> but that's how a lot of us garnered the following we have. You yeah. know, by coming out and just factually breaking these people down being like look here are the facts like here's actual evidence unlike anything you guys ever say you know half of them are like breaking news you know that so and so are doing this and doing that and it's like okay where's the evidence right like where where are you getting this from what is your source show me your receipts and and they never have a good source stop fact checking yeah, like, you know, I like to Google things and check it. Like, give yeah. me some information to go off of here. Yeah. You know, like, something to read besides you saying it. Right. You know, like, and that's the that's the hardest thing for me is just watching all these people spout nonsense and then, and, and also the people believing it without any actual, you know, verifiable proof. And that's the willful ignorance. Like you're, you yeah. literally just you'll you can accept. Trust me, bro. As as gospel. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Rochelle, on the same page, girl. Try- that is literally. <laughs> you guys literally said it at the same time. <laughs> that's creepy. Rochelle, she's my spirit animal. I'm just telling spirit you right animal. Now. Yeah. Yep. What's uh, Jinx? By the way, I have an idea that I think oh. we need to that we need to uh, start promoting. I want to bring back Slugbug. 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 You remember that game, right? No. Slugbug. Every what time you drive down the road and you'd see a Volkswagen bug, you'd oh, slug the person next to you. Oh, what did we call that? We called slug it Slugbug. No. I'm sure it was probably something racist. What the hell? Was the, I was about to say, is there a hood version of this that I was unaware of? <laughs> 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 I got to remember what it's called. Now oh, I don't know. Shit. And I'm not going to put it on air. I was about to say, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, this feels like this feels like one of those me. that should be a text later. <laughs> you ain't getting me on this joke. You ain't getting me. But no, uh, so for those of us who do remember Slugbug, um, I, I think we need that to do the same. That sounds like some Leave it to Beaver shit. What is this? Dude, I, this is when we were kids. You're driving, you, you're doing a long road trip and just, freaking you play Slugbug. All right, black people, raise your hand. Who played Slugbug? Okay, bug? so okay. they called it Punch Buggy. Okay. <laughs> So I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm just abuse. saying I can see the demographic. Abuse. We called it abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Punch buggy. See, everybody, like, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. I'm just so saying I, I, I think... now see the demographic of our show. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's a lot of white people. <laughs> um, but no, I think we need to do the same thing with, with the Cybertruck. Every time you see one of those ugly pieces of garbage... But we oh, need to call it something man. good. Oh man! Like uh, I don't know. Did, yeah. What did Pat say? Tesla slap? I don't know about that one. It needs mm. to. It needs to be good. Like, like you know, punch buggy or 
Yeah, it's got to be some slug bug, something like that. Cyber junk. I don't know. <laughs> cyber I'm not punch. Cyber is, punch. There you go. <laughs> cyber junk. There it all is. I like cyber punch. God, it's so good. It's just cringe, man. Just to see those trucks. It's cringe. My wife is uh, finally spotting them, and it's hilarious to see her response. Oh, she dude, goes, people the actually kids. buy that shit? She goes, the kids are priceless. There's not, there's not many here. There's not many out here. And so when she sees them, you know, just running around, she Tesla sees them. Tesla tickle. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Cyber, cyber cuck. Uh, that's a good one. Tesla, Tesla tickle, cyber punch. What are some other ones? Uh I discovered two neighbors have one. Yeah, we we we've, we've got several here in Tucson and it's just like if there was ever something that was a clear presentation of I'm a douche, it, yeah. it's somebody driving a cyber truck. Like yeah, honestly, if you out. gave me a cyber truck, I would fucking sell it and either give the money to 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 a charity or go buy myself something that I actually wouldn't be embarrassed to be spotted in. I would probably blow it up for the gram. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Cause I've seen it for done. charity. I blow it, it up for charity. And, and it's the, it's the cast aluminum, you know, uh, frame on the bumper that I love most. Oh my God. It's so bad. It is so bad. It's so bad. Like I've got video guys. You really should go see it on some of my social media. It's it is. Bad. I forget what his name is, but uh, a dude that like, you know, he does videos about trucks and like basically beating the crap out of them and seeing right. what they can take. And the, the, the video 13 minute video he did on the cyber truck. And it started off. Like I was actually kind of worried, like, Oh man, this dude's going to prove the cyber truck is actually freaking good. Like yeah. it kind of started out that way. And then it went downhill very quickly, very fast. <laughs> like very. very fast. Like that car started literally falling apart yeah, yeah. and it, it was just like wow that's cheap like yeah. that is cheap yeah and uh you know the 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 other best part was the one the one recall for the pedal the gas pedal because it was plastic and it kept slipping <sighs> off the clip and it would get jammed up so what would happen was you'd push the gas pedal down and the pedal would slip forward like that off the clip that was on the, the base and it would jam itself underneath the thing oh, oh so no. that you couldn't it the pedal wouldn't come back up wouldn't come back up nope nope <laughs> so you're doing 70 oh. and you know the pedals just yeet. that's it that's you bye-bye put that self-drive on and try and get down there <laughs> shit looked like a terrible hearse from roblox man that shit looks terrible <laughs> oh my god yeah it does double doesn't it <laughs> yeah it does it does it'll take you it's right to the grave car, man it's just ugly. and i wonder who he scammed because you know he didn't create it so who who did he what See, child i think he actually i actually think he could have created that concepts of a plan concept wise yeah <laughs> concepts of a plan and then he said here build this it's like because he here's honestly when plan. i look at tesla and the 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 timeline of their uh designs and what has come out right. like you look at what it started with you know that original roadster was was a, was a bad looking car right. like that made everybody want a tesla and then elon but that was the original creators that i believe that car was was attached to the two men that actually created, created tesla. the company right right so what ha what i think we saw what this is just my personal opinion. What I think we saw happen was Elon pushed those two gentlemen out of the company. And I believe that once they were gone, because they were the actual brains behind it, right? that you know he filled himself with yes people that started to just do what he wanted. And we saw what happens when you put a uh, infantile child in control of a billion-dollar company. Yeah. Um, you know, same thing he's done with Twitter. He's literally tanked Twitter in a matter of a year. It's, it's quite impressive. And that's impressive. what I mean. I know people who bought a Tesla when it was like kind of a cool thing. It was, you know, five, ten years ago, like the beginning yeah. of it all. And it was expensive, right? Um, if you're buying a Cybertruck, you're a douche. Because yeah. I'm sorry, it's you're dealing with Musk now, right? It's yeah. not. It's it's after. It's post X or whatever this is, you know, Twitter. Um, it's just it, it, it's there's no way around it. And it's, nope. it, there's even conversations about how he's upset because people are, are, are like Brazil, for example, being like, we're not using Twitter. Like, we're not doing this anymore. We're done. And uh, and so they're talking about how he's pulled out people from SpaceX 
out of of the country of Brazil. It's just just children, man child. Just I'm sorry, not doing okay. their part. You're golden. It you you didn't. No one even noticed. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where, you know, it you, when you think about it of like, okay, if if anything happens to uh, any of these companies, Tesla, this or our um, space SpaceX, how is he going to use the other ones to then flex on you? And it's just like. No, yeah. no one's even interested in you, man. No one's interested. Like, let it go. Yeah. No, <laughs> Cybertruck is the new Pinto. I like that one. Um, so with before we move on from, well, we're not really going to move on from Trump because I think we got two more videos relating to him. But uh, I want to talk about a new crypto scam mm. that that is is popping up that uh, <clears throat> I think everybody should know about. This is dangerous. This is this is dangerous. So um, this is from old Trumpy. Join me live on Twitter spaces at 8 p.m. this September 16th for the launch of World Liberty Financial. We're embracing the future with crypto and leaving the slow and outdated big banks behind. So Elon Musk and him have come up with this, uh, this little scam. Now, for those of you who may not spend as much time online as I do, following Elon and what he does, one of the biggest things that he used Twitter for was manipulating the site, the um, crypto market. Mm -hmm. um, he did it because one of the biggest incomes for Tesla, and you again, go Google this and verify it. One of the biggest income for Tesla was their crypto investments. Right. So it becomes really easy to make profits off of crypto when you are able to manipulate the market when you need to. That's right. And that was literally what Elon was doing. And he stopped doing it for a while because people were catching on to what he was doing and he was getting in trouble. So this is just another example of, of a scam. You know, it's a crypto. For for uh, Elon's scam, just to give people context, yeah. he was using Dogecoin and Bitcoin. He was invested in Bitcoin, but he was saying that uh, uh, Tesla would accept Dogecoin for payment yep. uh, for Tesla. And so there was this huge, massive movement. People started flocking in, buying up Dogecoin. And then Elon had Dogecoin at the time, and then he did a sell-off, a massive sell-off. So he walked away with a lot of people's money. Yep. And, and when you see these kind of pump and dump schemes, it's very easy when you don't understand what's going on with crypto. There's there is some great altcoins. There's some, you know, there's going to be great possibilities for this technology, especially as we go into the future. Um, but right now, much like the uh, EV infrastructure, we don't have it here yet. But yeah. it is on the on the breaking point. There is some things there for us to all educate ourselves uh, safely to understand what you can do with crypto in general. It's not just currency, just what it can do with with technology of um, sending information. It, it's yeah. it's ridiculously insane how how vast it's going to take us, you know. And you think about this within the context of like light year travel and all this other stuff. It's just it's it's really ahead of us. Yeah, you know, for me, I think it. I think the American people should really pay attention to a man who is willing to come out why he is running for president and push a crypto scheme. You know, with Elon Musk, like it's probably not a good idea to put him in office knowing that what Elon Musk wants is to deregulate everything. Yeah. You know, so imagine somebody being in the crypto market, having their own crypto currency and being president at the same time and time and being able to literally manipulate the market and deregulate it. That's right. That that's what I hope people pay attention to. Like this is the guy that said, "Oh, I'll de I'll, I'll uh, 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 remove myself from my companies." You know, if I'm elected president, he never yep. did that. Yep. You know, yep. he he was always running the company while he was president. You know, and uh, if you don't know which one he put first, yeah. So oh, yeah, um, yeah uh, stay away from the crypto. <laughs> You know, because again, if you go look at Trump Media, I think it's at about sixteen dollars now. Uh, uh, the it's dropping, it's oh, just a dude, steady drop. It, man. It's, it's been falling it's hard. So bad. Yeah. So it's, it's like hard. so he sees that that coming to an end, and, and I feel he, for anybody 
do not try to pump and dump that. Like, don't. Yeah, no, it's not stay worth away it. From it. Just yeah, stay away. It's from not it. worth it. Yeah, thank you. Divest was actually the the word I was looking for. Thank you, Rochelle. Uh, D- uh, Donald Trump said that he would divest from his businesses and let you know his family run it, and he never now, did that. And now he wants to create a, a, a crypto coin. Yeah, and, and he wants president, and he wants to deregulate everything. And again, <clears throat> and uh, Project Twenty Twenty Five, Ryan. Yep. He wants to then also uh, uh, dis- disassemble. Um, disable the uh the fed and tell the fed what to do yep it just doesn't sound smart so sounds like sounds like it's casinos in uh february 2021 a 10k filing revealed that tesla had invested 1.5 billion in the cryptocurrency bitcoin the company uh indicated it would soon accept bitcoin as a form of payment that's right so Elon Musk has been doing this for a while and he still kind of does it but not as much as he he was like it was daily and the way that he was able to to especially the dogecoin there for a while the way he was able to fluctuate that one uh he made a lot of money off of that yeah yeah you know like i said it's it's one thing to to invest in something you know but essentially what he's doing is insider trading but with crypto it's essentially and he has a platform because if he just makes one tweet that's it. You know, it 175 it, it, million people on his that follow him on his platform, even if half of them are bots. Grifters are griff. You know, and then the bots amplify it. And but I also wonder. I also wonder, and keep this in mind. How easy is it for foreign entities, i.e., oligarchs, i.e., Putin, to buy coins, and it be legit? Oh, too too easy. And not only you that, I mean? money laundering, money laundering options. Yeah, and that's through, what I, and that's what I'm well. going for. Yeah, yeah. If 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 we're talking about washing, and and making it a certain way, just just like how the uh, this this uh, social media platform that he had, yep, same thing. Yep. It was easy to wash their hands, money, and uh, and and really kind of just, in a way, get an investment from a foreign agent. Yeah. Now the worst thing was that that. To me, that wasn't even the worst thing Donald Trump did this week. To me, this was it. And especially considering how many people out there, you know, put the flag in their bio and claim to love the flag and criticize people who burn the flag and blah, blah, blah. But they're perfectly okay with this. Like that was at a 9-11 memorial that was on 9-11 that he did that so it's like you 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 guys don't care about the flag code you don't care about laws you don't care that he's a felon you don't care that he's a fraud you don't care that he's a a a convicted sexual abuser or or found liable sexual abuse you know because i know how much you guys like to pick and choose your words uh an accused pedophile um, somebody who who disparages our military, who uh, refused to go to Dover Air Force Base after one time because he got chastised by a family uh, that totally abandoned the Kurds, that ignored the four special forces people uh, that were killed in Niger. Um, like this dude is a massive piece of garbage. And if you watch that debate and you watch videos like what I just showed you, and you're still undecided or you still want to vote for Trump, then you are a very lost person. They're also like the I, same people who are um, who claim that Kaepernick taking a knee was disrespecting the flag. Yeah. They're the same exact people. Well, and what did Trump say? I mean, Trump literally cursed, I think, yeah. when he responded to that. Yeah. Like, and it's like, oh, but you're okay with that. But you literally are disrespecting the flag, like literally. Yeah. Yeah. Letting letting a, a freaking domestic terrorist and a felon sign the flag like he's some hero. It, it's it, to me that's even more disgusting than signing the Bible. <clears throat> I love and, I, and and it may be some folks that are in this chat uh, here um, posted this, but I love that it was you know here's the president's uh, Trump uh, Biden uh, Madam President uh, elect sitting there and uh and they're taking photos and then you hear just one annoying voice in the background out of this ocean of people donald 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 it's like well they clearly brought somebody with them you know whatever the case is yeah and then like a guy chimes in and it's like just two voices screaming his name and it's just like a oh, it feels shit. staged and b it's like you're at 9 11 on 9 11 
please have some dignity. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Like this is a place where it should be just a moment of silence. You know, it's not you screaming, whatever, because you want to grift and you want to be there and you want to be. Did you hear the Did you hear the lady that was criticizing him though? No. There's a video of of him and the lady's like, "Where you been? I've been here for twenty years. Where you been?" And it was just like, "There's that one." Yep. There's that one because I was gonna say, was he there last year? Was he there? I don't believe he was. Was he there when he was president? I don't know. Be interesting to see, but she called him out. She was like, "I've been here for the last twenty years." That sounds like a true New Yorker. Where you been? Yeah, she had a New York accent. Yeah, she had a New York accent. I've been on this block. Where you been? You know, but I mean, it's it's valid. You, that might you know, have been Robin and, and, Wig. Who knows, man? And hey, I will say this: Donald Trump is not the only politician to, you know, come to those events when it is politically right. beneficial, right? And the not be, are on. and not because they know it's the right thing to do. That's you right. know, he's not the only one, but he's just the one that we like to pick on. Eh, he, nah, he. When you're bringing when you're bringing a a conspiracy theorist as your date to a 911 uh you know event on 911 yeah son, you're you're asking But I mean everybody that's surrounding him at this point is either a conspiracy theorist or a literal criminal. Yeah. Like people that have gone to jail for this guy. Yeah. And they're still hanging around him. Like I'm sorry, if I go to jail for somebody and you don't you don't step up and you don't take care of me and you uh uh-uh. uh like I'm not coming back. Like, oh, let me go to jail again for your dumb ass. Like, no. Well there's, well, there's a there's a part where I mean, he knows the best people, you know. Yeah. They're 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 really, it's the bottom of the barrel that he has left with him. And uh, keep in mind that they they really were banking, because we we gotta we gotta remind it a little bit, Ryan. After after he was shot nine times and um. And that he, you know, went into the the RNC and they they were they were championing this this whole thing that he was pretty much going to be shooed right into the presidency. Right. The momentum was there. Yeah. They were celebrating. They yep. were celebrating a little too hard like they had it all in the bag. Yeah. The massive shakeup that came in. Um, and like we said, uh, Biden took one uh, for the team on the chin and and he they spent how many millions as a diss to him and it's like wasted those millions because now it's like they wasted their whole convention completely. And it was beautifully done. Uh, yep. Another masterclass. Yep. And it's one of those things where um, you now see Kamala in this seat and, and how she's driving everything. And now this massive shift in movement behind her where Trump is now realized. And, and he has probably the people in his ear who are telling him that, you know, you did a really great job, boss. You did a really great job in this debate. And it's like no one's really telling him the truth. And no one was telling him the truth when he was president. And here we are where he's still walking around like, yeah, I got that. I don't know if he doesn't trust his own eyes. Because when he was in Arizona, that's not a massive room. That's not what you were doing. Yeah, no, that's not. It's not. A, it's, a, it's, it's a theater. It's, it's not a stadium. It's not. Doesn't seat twenty thousand. Like I said, it maybe seats a thousand, fifteen hundred. You remember our auditorium in high school? That seated yeah. seven hundred. Oh wow! So I mean, just look at that auditorium and yeah. remember our auditorium from high school. We didn't have the upper balcony, right. so maybe add you know two hundred, five hundred for that. Right. But well, mezzanine. Okay. Okay. You know that was the size yeah. of our auditorium. Yeah. Like so he's was, doing high schools. Basically, I mean, hey, <laughs> it's a step up. It's a community college. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. So, um, but but look, I, I right. think what what I'll end us talking about. I believe it'll be us talking about. Uh, yeah, that'll end us talking about Trump. And by the way, just in case you you, you know didn't pick up, Laura Loomer is flying around on Donald Trump's plane. You know, yeah. the one I we just showed you the racist you know clip of. She's literally working for trump now so uh <clears throat> you know like you said surrounds himself with the best people with that said we we've talked on the show about you know trump's campaign using the families of um, veterans 
the families of the soldiers that we lost over in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. um, you know, and other things. Um, and this video is just another example of how how low the Trump campaign will go and how unthoughtful they are about how what they're posting might affect the families of, of some of these people. And so I just want to play this, this uh, video, um, and it's the father of Aiden Clark, who was uh, an 11-year-old boy who was killed. And um, the this Trump is also in Springfield, Ohio. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, they're really so, going after this Haitian movement right now. So, um, so I'm just going to play it, and then, then we can talk about it. Clark was killed by a 60-year-old white man. I bet you never thought anyone would ever say something so blunt. But if that guy killed my 11-year-old son, the incessant group of hate-spewing people would leave us alone. They make it seem as though our wonderful Aiden appreciates your hate. Using Aiden as a political tool is, to say the least, reprehensible for any political purpose. And speaking of morally bankrupt, politicians, Bernie Moreno, Chip Roy, J.D. Vance, and Donald Trump, they have spoken my son's name and used his death for political gain. This needs to stop now. They can vomit all the hate they want about illegal immigrants, the border crisis, and even untrue claims about f fluffy pets being ravaged and eaten by community members. However, they are not allowed, nor have they ever been allowed to mention Aiden Clark from Springfield, Ohio. Springfield, Ohio. Yep. So, yeah, uh, like I said, that was a very shocking comment to say that he wished his son had been killed by an old white man. Um, that just shows you how sick these people are, yeah. that they're willing to uh, use his 11 year old son to push their, their immigrant agenda, their anti-immigrant agenda, I should say. Um, so yeah, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing I mean, with people. I mean, J.D. Vance is trash, and the way that he's even talked about, I, they they lack empathy, and and even to use the story, um, they they don't they don't see humanity. Hmm. They don't see people who are actually struggling. People who, um, they only see pawns, and they only see people that they need to step over to get where they want, which is power. And yeah. we know that J.D. has no backbone and he has no soul because he is willing to give up anything for power. Yep. And Trump's never, never known anything but. Yeah. He's a narcissist who was a, a silver spoon up his ass. You know, it's not, it's not a person who really, do you know what I mean? It's not. I a didn't real mean it like that, Tabby. Okay, all right. I know she's, she's <laughs> sixty equals old. I mean, I'm forty two and I feel pretty old, but I mean, sixty. You about to collect a check, girl? You about to, you about to, you about to collect a check? Um, yeah, that's, Van, that's Vance really has. He's lied about so much. Um, it, it, it's really sad to see what some people will say, are willing to say, you know. And I, and I'm, I have to believe that Vance knows a, some of the stuff he's saying is complete nonsense. Yeah, you know. So if the fact that you're willing to go out there and you know, sully your good name, you know, by pushing these uh, extremist. Uh, positions you know uh, because you want to become vice president right it's like i get it i you know power power is very attractive but how you get there matters yeah you know uh, there's a comment about uh from the void alone um my aunt was killed by a by a um immigrant and it's uh, uh if you scroll down a little bit i got it. so read that one uh, my aunt was killed by a migrant worker who was her romantic partner, and I didn't let that turn me into a vile racist. If my aunt's murder was used like that, I'd say the same thing. Well, first uh, off, sorry for your loss. That's, absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's, that's tragic because of how 
intimate that is. Yeah. And and that's a that's a whole nother shine on domestic abuse and what's going on in this country and what's happening. Yeah. What's really tragic about this other scenario is that that was just a traffic uh, accident. That was a car hitting a, a school bus, the school bus going over. It wasn't even anything personal. It wasn't even thing that they knew each other. It was just a car accident yeah. and it happened to kill. And that's what that's what's really tragic about this is that it was just a kid on a school bus. Um, and then now it's turned into this whole thing that sounds bigger than it, it, it really is. It's, you know, it's more so of just that. But, you know, sending love to you. Uh, yeah. Void alone. For sure. Um, so, yeah, with that, let's move on to your feelings Friday. <laughs> first off, you shouldn't show the picture first. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but feelings Friday, here we are. As you guys always know from Feelings Friday, we always talk about those who get caught up in their feelings. And one of the biggest things that we wanted to do before my man jumped the gun my bad. is I wanted to talk about one of the biggest conservative friends I have. Um, he is a camp counselor. Uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't get the business on his own. You know, it was really, it ran in the family. And, uh, but he's great with kids. They did a 12 documentary series on him and his family. Uh, show the picture. <laughs> My friend Jason here, <laughs> pro-life, great with kids. Uh, I didn't put a mega hat on him for this photo, but I wanted to let you guys know that Feelings Friday, you know, today's his day. And I just want to say, if you guys see him run first, and maybe you <laughs> might make it, but <laughs> the reality is, let's make sure that we don't see this nightmare in our lives, and we uh, call that the uh, mega movement. And let's make you. sure that that dies, because if there is 12 movies of mega, I'm going to be upset with all of you, okay? Telling Show you. up. I need you to go register and vote. I need y'all to get ready because we have about 55 days before. Yeah. Is that where we're at? I think we're – I have is a countdown. I have a countdown on my phone, so I can – Okay. All right. But just um, know, Jason is good with kids. Uh, you just might not get them back the way that you 53 gave 53 so, days. 53 days. Yep. Here we are. And with that said, uh, a good site that you can go to, you can go to vote.org or you can also go to voterepro.org. And so that's V-O-T-E-R-E-P-R-O.org. And this is an organization that I'm working with uh, to try to get uh, registered voters that also are focused on reproductive rights. So it's a really cool website that you can go register and then you, you, there's another step that you can go find um, your local representatives that are uh, for women's rights. So That's it's right. a really cool site. Um, I'm really glad they reached out to me to allow me to, to help uh, amplify them and what they're doing. Um, so, you know, everybody, I love organizations and people out there that are doing this kind of work because it really is important to, uh, you know, get these young people involved and, uh, you know, it, it'll be right around the corner that my daughter, you know, needs that site. So um, really like this organization, voterepro.org. Go there, send the site to anybody that you know that might need to check the registration or register to vote. Um, or they can just use the site to you can still go search for your local representatives that are pro uh, pro choice. Right. So um, and the thing is that uh, with that. I really, Ryan, I have to touch on this one thing, because, I mean, we are talking about Springfield, Ohio. We're talking about, you know, Jason. We're talking about a lot of things on this uh, uh, Friday 13th. I have a bone to pick with conservative men and specifically to you, J.D. Vance. If you're going to start these rumors about Haitians eating animals, cats, dogs, everything, and uh, you're going to put this out there. Conservative men. I don't trust you. And here's what I'm going to tell you. If you don't eat the kitty, I can't trust you. <laughs> I'm going to need you to understand something here. You're trying to take away women's rights. And you don't eat the kitty? I can't trust you. <laughs> Real men eat the kitty. And I'm going to need you to step your goddamn game up. <laughs> you got to eat the kitty. Dude, and definitely. if you're a real man, you're going to eat that kitty. And you're going to like it and ask for seconds. I... That's so, my TED Talk. Thank you for stopping by. I saw a meme the other day that it was a truck that had, I eat kitty from the back. And it was a, and a and woman. And I second that message. And a woman, a woman shared it. And she's <laughs> like, I have followed this man from fucking Springfield, Illinois, 
down to freaking Indianapolis trying to <laughs> see what that's about. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I was dying laughing. It's like, I have followed mic. this man 350 miles. <laughs> we stand by that message. <laughs> Eat the kitty. All right? Yeah, I think I think you, you can tell. <laughs> Let that kitty have a seat. <laughs> you yeah. Oh, B- Bunny. Yeah, no, Bunny will. Yeah, she'll get us in trouble. Hey, she, she... <laughs> bring that that Freaky Friday energy here. All right, here on the mic. Here we are. Good TED talk, sir. Good TED talk. <laughs> That's my TED talk. Thank you very much for your your time, guys. <laughs> I always eat the kitty. Oh my god. I hope my wife is watching this right now. <laughs> Hey man, you better you better show up hungry. Oh yeah, hey, <laughs> I'm always ready for dessert. Oh, uh, <laughs> so what's for dinner? How is this the end of the show? <laughs> <laughs> because we like to, we like to end on a high note. All right, and I uh, really do hope that that conservatives are are taking notes. Uh, eat the <laughs> yeah, yeah, conservative okay. men definitely need okay. to take notes. Okay, I'm gonna take this home with me. That would require them to actually care about somebody else's orgasm, though. So uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> you know they're all becoming fans of your show. Yeah, quickly. Quickly. Um, with that said, we end on some positives. We got. Uh, I'm going to talk about my positive, but this is a positive I just wanted to point out in case you guys didn't see it. I don't know if it'll will it let me talk over the video. I don't think it will. But this is a quick video I'll show of uh, John Bon Jovi mm. helping um, somebody that was in crisis off of a bridge in Nashville. And um, it just really warmed my heart. So I thought that uh, I would show it to to you uh, real quick. John Bon Jovi. Why am I sweating? Angry buddy said. <laughs> that kitty talk will get you, girl. I'm gonna tell you right um, now. But no, so you know, it's it's John Bon Jovi's always come off as one of those cool dudes. So it's nice to see, um, you know, that he's somebody that would step in in one of those situations and um, you know do do something kind for somebody else. Uh, and with that said, I just want to say. If you or someone you know is having a mental health crisis, there's a hotline that you can call. It's uh, 988, and it's it's like our own little 911 number, but for mental health folks like us. So if, if you're struggling and you need some help, don't hesitate to pick up the phone. Call 988. They will provide you with some resources that you may not already have. Um, and, and just remember, it takes it takes a lot of courage to, to ask for help, and uh, I respect the hell out of anybody that uh, – that goes and tries to to figure out what's going on instead of just going down the road because it's a hell of a lot easier to self-medicate and keep going down the road than it is to go get help. So uh, hats off to everybody that, that makes the choice to, to go find some help. And with that, what do you got, brother? What do you got for me this week? Oh, for the positive. For our positive. Man, there's a couple things happening. Um, the The major one is I probably had the best bubble bath with my son today <laughs> when he pimp smacked me with bubble uh, soap suds in the face. Oh, nice. After putting his own goatee on saying he has daddy's goatee, and then what did five fingers say to the face is what I got. So I'm apparently raising a little Rick James in my house. <laughs> um, that's happening. And uh, uh, we're getting prepared for birthdays because mm. mine is uh, coming up next month. Mm. And... Uh, uh, and then his is the following, and uh, got some big news for you guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a new wait. son on the way. Yay! So we have a new baby addition that's coming. So I got two scorpions. That oh, I'm your poor be, uh, wife is going to be stuck with three men? Whoo, three Sherman men. Yeah, that poor, that <laughs> so. poor woman. I'm going to have to send her some bottles of wine. Well, it was Eating Kitty that got me these kids, all right? So here we are. So, so did my job. <laughs> And I'm still hungry, so there's that. Oh, oh, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> so 
so we're doing our uh, thing. We're doing our thing. So I got my I got my little scorpion. So I can't wait to have uh, my own little you know dojo because I'm gonna be training these little fighters and I'm gonna have amen. a good time with them. So it's going down. That's awesome. No, yeah, um, yeah totally happy for you guys. Uh, so we're really... in full preparation mode. That's so we yeah, got full prep, of... full prep, definitely. Um, I, I I don't miss the bottles and I don't miss the diapers. Um, I do miss the little cuteness, but uh, yeah. Oh man. Oh, I'm just, I'm soaking it all up. I'm enjoying know, it. Dude. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, man. You know, it's like, it's like my old man said before he passed away, he was like, you know, the money, the career, all that crap. He's like, it really doesn't matter much. You know, he's like the photos, the memories, the trips we took, yeah. that stuff. He's like, that's the stuff that you care about when you're, when you're sitting there contemplating your life. You know, oh yeah, and it was just really enlightening, you know, at 25 to kind of take that in, and just the fact that it just really still sticks out in my mind, you know, that like, yeah, the, you know, it's great what we do, you know, and, and everything, but at the end of the day, you know, it's these little rugrats and the the memories that we make as a family that 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 are going to matter most. So, um, well, with that, here's my positive, and and again, it's going to sound like a negative, but it's a positive, I promise. So, um, my my dermatologist called like an hour and a half before the show and um told me that i had four moles or spots taken off uh about a month ago or a couple weeks ago hadn't been that long and they called to tell me that the biopsies came back and three out of the four were, were fine but there was one that came back uh that was abnormal and it was you know there's a scale of you know of fine to you got start getting into abnormal and then the severity of the abnormal and then it goes into like actual cancer melanoma so i was like i wasn't at melanoma but i was far enough into it that that they want to cut off more so i'm going to be going in in a couple weeks to get um even more cut out and this time it's going to require like stitches and stuff like that so um but the the good thing is is that i have insurance and mm. that I'm able to go get these checks that, you know, it's covered. I don't get, I'm not getting charged thousands of dollars to get this done because I have good insurance. And it just reminds me that everything that I've had to have done all the way up to being 42 and knowing that if I hadn't had my colon taken out in 2019, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. You know, meaning translate that to if I didn't have health insurance, I wouldn't be here right now. And I think everybody in this country should be entitled to the same health insurance that I have basic health insurance to get checked. Because if you have a family like I do, you deserve to be around to watch them graduate, to watch them have their families, you know, to see your grandkids, you know, things that my dad didn't get to do. And so it, it's, uh, it's another uh, not side effect, but it's another thing that's related to the, the Lynch syndrome genetic uh, thing that we talked about a couple shows ago. So yeah. it's still tied to that. Um, but like I said, the good news is, is that they, they found it. And uh, we because we know about the Lynch syndrome, I go in every six months now. But this is all new to me. I didn't know any of this. I didn't know Lynch syndrome could affect you know me for skin cancer as well as my colon and so it's just really interesting stuff, but uh, I just feel fortunate to have, you know, insurance and that I'm able to uh, get these things done so that I am around for a long time and I'm here to bother you all and, and talk your ears off and, uh, you know, fill the airwaves with my rage and, and, uh, <laughs> and joy, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy, <laughs> but no, Sometimes um, they sound the same. yeah, they do. But no guys, differ. you know, uh, you guys said you guys always send me you know your prayers and your 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 good energy and um you know whatever it is that you you believe in and and it just means the world to me so uh thank you for supporting me keep supporting me uh definitely could use some some extra prayers over the next couple of weeks but um like i said it's nothing that's going to require any kind of uh you know treatment afterwards it's just removing yeah. extra to make sure that it nothing comes back so the uh, big thing is I, I really appreciate how open you are, especially through this process, and that you you allow all of us to be a part of it with you. Like you really have built a really great community. Um, you were gracious enough to let me join in on the ride and, and to do this together. 
Uh, and it's, it, I, I honestly have to tell you, Ryan, like it's, it's been amazing for you to be so open and transparent with us. I wish more people were. Um, because there are other people who are going through it that will see this and, and, and realize that, you know, you are giving this a voice that is, is helping to calm the situation where it, some people could feel alone, you know, yeah. and you really are uh, allowing us to be there with you. And, and that, that, takes, that takes a lot. I give you a lot of credit, man. So love you dearly for that. I love you too, brother, and I, <clears throat> I, I appreciate that. You know, the reality is that's, that's really why I started this. You know, like I, when I started, I was kind of documenting – the 2019 surgery of my colon and I wanted to bring awareness to Lynch syndrome and, and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of one of the things that got me started and, and we talked about it a lot. You know, I think people, people buy into authenticity and, and I think a lot of people, they can tell if you're being fake and, and uh, so I just try to be authentic and, and just know that, there's a lot of things like you said that I deal with that I know other people do. More importantly, I know that there are people out there that don't know that they deal with this stuff. And I know for, I've gotten messages where people are like, dude, it made me go get tested. And I found out we have this genetic marker for, you know, uh, uh, breast cancer. And it's like, no shit. That's so cool. You know, but, but it, that, it's like, once you have that information, it's like, Oh, all the things you can do with it to make sure that you stick around for a long time. And, and we were talking about it, you know, we were talking about it in the green room, you know, in the coming years and, and decades, medical technology is going to continue to get better. Right. And the things that we're going to be able to do with stem cells and, you know, they're going to be able to grow my kids new colons and Petri dishes and install them like a car part. You know, that that's where we're headed. Yeah. And I'm glad that they are going to be able to benefit from from these medical technologies and, and these advancements. So, um yeah, no, it's all good, and um, I'm 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 glad that I have good doctors. I got a great team of of dermatologists and uh, cardiologists, and you know all of them. So uh, shout out to Dyson Dermatology here in Tucson. They are freaking amazing. They take care of my daughter too. So um, yeah, really really good people over there, and they treat us really well. So um, very thankful for them. Very thankful for all of you. And brother, if you don't have anything else. Oh, man, you guys have a beautiful weekend. And yes. for those who are new, welcome to Hold the Mic. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button. We have a good time here. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, nothing is left off the table. So come yeah. join us every Friday, 8 Eastern, for those here on the East Coast, 5 for uh, mid the country. You guys don't have daylight savings time? You yeah, the shit. Here, yeah, here so. in Arizona, we don't do that stuff. <laughs> Which is always my favorite argument with you. I know. But regardless, it's always good to see you, my man. You too, brother. And, and everybody here in the chat. Really appreciate all you guys here for joining us. Yeah, seriously. Like I said, we got you know got almost 2,000 people here watching us tonight. It's amazing uh, to spend our Fridays with you all. And uh, you know, like I said, we really feel your, your appreciation. And we love sharing things with you like incoming newborn babies and 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 other things that hopefully can help you and educate you so with that said much love keep fighting stay safe out there and remember voterepro.org you can go check them out check your voter registration make sure you educate yourselves on the people that you're about to vote for it's important with that said stay safe out there love y'all